Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about LDTK, the Level Design Toolkit, and frankly, this is one of my favorite map editors out there, probably my favorite 2D map editor out there, and that includes things like Unity and Godot. I like the way that this designs 2D levels better than any other option out there. It is just a polished piece of software. This actually comes from the guy that creates Dead Cells, or one of the guys behind Dead Cells, which is also one of my favorite games, so maybe that makes sense to me, but it's just such a clean and polished user interface. We're talking about today because LDTK 1.5 was just released, added a bunch of new functionality to it. But first, a quick overview of LDTK itself. So what you can see here, this is kind of an overview of the world. You can have multiple different levels. You can drill down into an individual level simply by clicking it and then out like so. Now, what I like with this guy, let's say I wanted to level and I wanted to just like, say resize it instead of going into you know the levels view so current level and then changing the properties over here now nah, we get these nice little easy handles and boom you just drag it out you notice here automatically filling in the background as well that's the other really impressive part of this as a 2D level editor, uh, it's got some really nice auto tiling features as an example. So let's go here, we're gonna do, you can see this guy's made up of four different layer sets. You have an entity layer, which is things like your players and, and inventory in the world. I'll show you how that works in just a second. We'll click that down and then you've got your sh wall shadowing. Look right here as an example. This is just another rendering layer. So it's a shadowing layer there as well. Uh, then we have the collisions layer, which is pretty much the main layer, the, the everything that you see here like so, and then the auto-generated background texture as well. So you notice when I resized the level, like so, it automatically populated it in. By the way, we also have control Z. So you have uh, multiple undo. I don't know what the limit is, but there's quite a few of them as well. The area that you will probably work in most is, for example, this collisions layer. This is your primary tile layer. And here's where the auto tiling comes in. So you can see here, we've got a set of um, dirt and stone for making our world up here. Those are all coming from your uh, tile set section, your traditional tile set painter, uh, but it's been created into these rules over here. So go on back over. Uh, so out of here, and you'll notice here, so if I want to go ahead and draw a ladder, what I do is I just come on in here. By the way, you'll notice you have this immediate zoom in and zoom out. Well, if I grab this guy right here, so we got a grass, a grass, and then like this dead space here, and I'm just gonna draw in, and you'll notice here, auto tiling is done for you. Once again, Control Z, gets rid of it as well. So basically you can draw with whatever one of these you've got, and then hopefully it can actually make sense of this. I'm doing something, it's probably, so see, and it automatically fill in the space. So again, if I change the legend of an area, it uses auto tile rules to fill in that particular space. And you can set these up, They're, they look scary at first. So you see here rules that are setting up how all these various different things work, but actually setting up the rules, again, it looks spooky at first, but there's a very clean and intuitive interface for doing so. Probably one of the easiest ways to get rules set up as well. Now you're gonna notice we also in the world have entities. And this is actually where this guy really shines. And by the way, you can export this out to a variety of different game engines. I'll show you the options later on, but you'll notice the things got like your player here. So player populated in the world, what you're gonna notice here is this player has uh, an inventory defined to it. So you got multiple different items in. We can drill into this entity here. By the way, this is the same as clicking up here to the entity section and picking out the entity you wish to work with. So you see here, here is our player entity and it has uh, an item, uh, a noom attached to it. So this is kind of an inventory. So it's an array of enumerated items and you can have basically the inventory that this person is containing. We can have multiple different values here. So I could add like a Boolean here um, and then we could call it like um, is dead and so on. So you could set these properties for things. I probably want to set it as the default as not dead. Uh, so yeah, you can easily create these guys. You have uh, multiple different options for having it show in uh, the editor as well. So you'll easily see uh, what is happening with your particular uh, entity as you're working with it. But another thing I want you to focus on right here is some of the other cool stuff you can do here. So for example here, this mob, you're gonna notice it has inventory. So when you, it dies, it'll drop meat. But you'll notice the other thing here is patrol. So right here, this entity has, and this will be an array of points. So you see over here, uh, patrol path, it's an array of point, like so. Well, the cool thing here is, so you see here, here is the visual path that this guy will follow upon. Well, what I could do is literally just drag it and it's gonna update that array for us visually. It, it's really cool that way. Same way here, we have uh, a chest with some inventory in it. Here, you're actually going to see the contents here. So if we wanna go ahead and add more inventory to it, I could just add another entity and we'll add a knife into the entity list. So you can really easily use this guy to populate your game world. It's, it's again, kind of staggering uh, how polished the interface is. 
Uh, so, oops, doing massive over zooming here. Again, switch between different levels, just boom, drop like that. The other cool thing here is we can actually go up here. Uh, you now have support for, go back to the project setting. Uh, you can actually do multi worlds. So here you've got multiple settings of um, uh, levels all together that you can navigate between. And by the way, if you do something stupid or breaking, you're going to notice it automatically highlights. So I accidentally drew up a chest in the world. It's going to say it's it's there's nothing in it. And, and there's an error state for that. And it points it out for you. So it makes it really easy to find your errors in this guy. And then when you are happy with it, you can basically export your project out. And you're good to go. So let's do just a quick navigation through the various different tabs that are available here. So we saw most of these things in action. Uh, this is your, again, entity area, enumerations. So if you've got arrays of stuff very common in this world here is your straight up tile sets that are defined there uh, and then we go over here uh, the documentation the other thing i really like with the documentation is what you're going to notice here is everything has like just a visual representation of exactly what it is so learning the hotkeys figuring out the mouse buttons and all that stuff very simple and straightforward you also have documentation on like the export format out so you can use it in your own thing and then you've got control over everything here so again i've scaled up the dpi as an example so it's easier to work with but you've got a ton of different options here so then we can control all the various different aspects you're working with with. It's nice. It is just a nice all around product. Now let's jump on over to the website. So if you're interested in checking this guy out, it is available at ldtk.io. Again, it's from the director of Dead Cells. This is free and open source. It's just powerful. It's available for a variety of different platforms, that being Windows, Mac, and Linux. So all the main guys right there. Works with a variety of different game engines. Super easy to use, auto rendering, multiple world support. So you can see kind of an example of it right there. Drill in between the areas. So you can design basically your full game in the editor side, uh, full customization ability of the editor you've got a sprite support um you can create platformer and top-down games it works in a number of different engines you can actually export this out to tiled if you want to mix and match with uh, that other engine or use tiled importers because tiled's been around for a very long time so almost everything out there has a tiled option uh, again in terms of loading ldtk files it's a pretty straightforward format and it is documented in the docs which we'll get back to in just a second but you're going to notice game engine wise there are loaders for unity mono game godot play date uh, game maker studio love 2d and bevy with bindings for um, hacks c c sharp c plus plus javascript haskell go python rust and kotlin so uh, very good support across the variety of programming languages and game engines out there so if you want to integrate this guy into your existing workflow should be no problems at all all. Uh, the other thing I mentioned earlier on, documentation, it has very nice documentation. So it's actually, uh, the interface is fully documented and the uh, how to actually use from a code side is all fully documented as well. Uh, very in-depth documentation again, always impressive. So here we've got documentation on actually how to use the editor itself, how to set up those rules and so on. Uh, I can't stop making, you know, huge statements about LDTK because it's one of those open source projects that is just so polished in every release it just gets a little bit more polished and here you're going to notice we've had uh two or we actually had three little patches since this release was and this release just came out like a few maybe a week ago and so it's very very updated very current which is quite cool so one of the things they did with this release is a new logo um yeah uh, on top of that we now have a global search option using control F. So if you've got, you want to try and find your um, NPC somewhere in the world, you can search this way for it. Uh, rules evaluation is now 20 times faster. There is now support for biomes should make rule based biome creation easier. So like things like uh, snow or, you know, dirt or whatever like that. So you create a noom, your various biomes, forest, desert, snow, uh, add a custom level field that uses a noom, open the layers panel, uh, point your new level under the biome enum for each group of rules. You may now pick which enum value should be enabled for this. For example, you may enter your group that paints snow over your platforms only if the snow biome is picked for this level. Uh, random rectangles of tiles for auto tiling rules. Uh, so again, new options in the auto tiling option. You can have it randomly pick a tile so you can have better diversity in your um, generated tiles. Custom layers list, rendering of tiles from nearby levels is what we saw earlier on. So before it used to be, you could only see what you were working on and not necessarily see the other things around you. So it gives you a good transition between the various different levels that work together. Uh, some improvements to JSON and other improvements as well. This guy is just, it's improving 
improving constantly and it came out initially in a very good state. Uh, finally, this is an open source project. So if you're interested, it is up on GitHub. It is under the MIT code license, which is a very flexible license. Uh, if you like what you see, come on in drop them a star. This project is very, very, very impressive. Also, by the way, uh, when you go to download it, you do have the option of supporting him as well. So it's available up on itch.io, kind of a pay what you like setup there. So if you want to support the project, you can support it financially as well. There's also GitHub sponsor options as well there. This is one of the gems in my humble opinion. Um, you know, there, there's a few programs that I, I loop back to all the time that really impress me. And LDTK is definitely one of them. So that's LDTK and LDTK 1.5. What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.